We all feel various emotions, anger, frustration, sadness, even rage. But ultimately, you are in control of any emotion you feel at any given moment. Yes, people may upset you. Yes, you may be let down. But emotions begin from the inside and they expand to the outside, meaning that our expectations, our ideas, and our thoughts are what really create our emotional response. But the neat thing about that is our idea, our thoughts, and our expectations are all things that can be changed, which in turn can help us to control our emotional response. A question that I often get from the people with whom I work with is, how am I supposed to change my emotional response based on what's happening to me, right? This happened to me. How can you expect me to respond any different? And there's a quote that goes, where your focus goes, your energy flows. And I love this quote because it's so true. If we choose to put all of our energy and our focus into the bad things and the, oh, whoa, well, it's me and the victim perspective, we are going to have those negative emotional responses. But if we choose to change that framework and put on the optimistic lens, then we're able to look at a situation and instead of saying, oh, whoa, well, it's me, I can't believe this happened, you're framing it as, wow, what can I learn from this? This must be working in my favor. So what can I seek to gauge from this experience or this emotional response? So let's talk about how you can get in control of your emotional response and ultimately change your life. So to master the emotion, the first thing you must do is to identify what emotion you're feeling and what is the trigger. So are you feeling sad because you're alone on Christmas or Thanksgiving and the trigger is that you had a really bad breakup recently? Are you feeling frustrated with yourself and disappointed in your choices because now you're living paycheck to paycheck and you've now overdrafted your account a second time or a third time? What is the emotion and what is the trigger? The second step to master your emotions is to appreciate the emotion. Now, I know that that doesn't sound ideal when you're dealing with extremely difficult emotions, but we all must do it. The truth is no emotion is bad in of itself. An emotion only becomes bad when we use it and respond to it in a negative way. So if you feel angry and you use that time to jog or to journal, then it's not necessarily a bad emotion. But if you become angry and you bust out windows and bash someone on social media, that becomes a negative emotion. And so we must first appreciate the feelings because the truth is we're human. We're made to feel a range of different emotions. And that's where we can learn and grow. If you think about it, so many people push their emotions under the rug or resist it because it's not something that we want to feel or we try to avoid it. I mean, think about anger management classes. They began because there's groups of individuals that feel anger but have never truly managed it. And so anger management classes teach them to appreciate the emotion but to respond appropriately. And so it's the same thing with you. If we spend our entire life resisting the emotion or pushing it under the rug, we're not opening it up to a chance to learn and to grow from it. So the second step is to appreciate the emotion. The third step is to analyze the emotion. Take some time to reflect on it. Like what purpose does this emotion serve? Is it protecting you? A lot of times when we're dealing with those difficult emotions, we're trying to justify our feelings or take ourselves out of the victim stance or feels like it's protecting our emotional place and our thoughts. So what value does this emotion serve for you? What benefit does this emotion have for you? When we're able to really analyze the emotion and understand where we're coming from, we can start to think of healthier alternatives to do these things. So for example, if you are responding with a certain emotion to protect yourself, maybe another way to protect yourself would be creating boundaries without it being an emotionally led response. And so being able to analyze the emotions is a very important step to overall master your emotions. Emotions can teach you very valuable lessons if you allow yourself to analyze and reflect on them. So now that goes to the fourth step. 
is to affirm yourself. So take a moment to affirm yourself by thinking of the last time that you have conquered a difficult emotion. Remind yourself of the strength that you built from that, of the resilience that you built from that, of the confidence that you built from that. So you may say something like, Hey, Dr. Nicole, you got this. You can handle this good. Hey, Dr. Nicole, you don't have to respond in anger. Hey, Dr. Nicole, don't let that person get you up out of your character. Affirm yourself and remind yourself that you're stronger than the emotion. Remember, I stated in the beginning that ultimately we are 100% in control of our emotional response. Even if it feels like we're not, we are. And so just reminding yourself of that, that you have the power, that you have the control, that you can choose how to respond and react to that situation. Situation. That reminds you that you are ultimately in control and allows you to make more informed decisions going forward. I think that too many times we allow people in our lives to control us or external circumstances to control us when in reality we can be in control of those things by controlling our response to it. You don't have to choose to let people in your life in a way that's going to impact you and control you in a negative way. Finally, the last step, the fifth step in mastering your emotion is to tackle the emotion with action. So it's great that you take this time to think about the emotion, to analyze the emotion, to ask yourself questions about it, to affirm yourself. But what can you do moving forward? What actions can you take that will set you up to not have an emotional response. So let's say that you're really frustrated that someone bashed you on social media and you feel tempted to do the same, to stoop to the same level. At this stage, you can say, what is a great emotional response that I can have? Or what is a great action step that I can take that won't set me up for failure, that won't set me up to have an emotional response? And it may be logging off of social media. It may be deactivating your account for a day. It may be calling a friend and venting. It may be journaling. It may be exercising. There's a lot of things that you can do. One strategy that I use with my clients is I have them identify 10 self-care strategies that they can do in a moment where they feel that they're going to have an emotional response. So typically these are quick self-care strategies that they can implement. So it may be journaling five things that you're grateful for. It may be calling a friend. It may be writing down what you really want to say publicly, but you won't allow yourself to do it. It may be going for a quick 15 minute walk. It may be meditating. It may be listening to upbeat music so that you can dance and get moving. Whatever your strategies are, identify them in advance. And so you have something quick that you can just pull from in a given moment. Maybe you write them out in a notepad in your phone. Maybe you carry around a little baggie with them. But if you're able to pull out an action, then you are more likely to respond in a positive way instead of a negative way. And in turn, you're mastering your emotions and not allowing your emotions to master you. So the truth is, mastering your emotions is not an easy concept. It's something that takes time. You may implement these steps one time and be really successful, and the next time you may fall short. That's okay, we're human. The purpose of this video is to arm you with the information so that you're constantly practicing more and more how to master your emotions, and the more you practice it, the more successful you'll be at actually doing it. So comment below and let me know how you have successfully mastered emotions in the past and what strategies you will implement moving forward to master your emotions as well. I look forward to hearing from you. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. And until next time, I will chat with you guys later.